top element in our model represents blood pH. Hopefully, as you all know, our normal range for blood pH is 7.35 to 7.45, with the pH being described as acidic if it goes below 7.35 and alkalotic as it goes above 7.45. The middle element in our model represents CO2, the respiratory component of blood pH. The normal range for CO2 is approximately 4.5 to 6 kilopascals on an arterial blood gas. Slightly confusingly in this model, we have an inverse scale. So we have high CO2 levels over here on the left and low CO2 levels down here on the right. Hopefully the reasons for doing this will become obvious as the video progresses. When CO2 combines with water, we get carbonic acid. Therefore, high levels of CO2 in our blood are going to drive our pH in an acidotic direction and low levels of CO2 are going to drive our blood in an alkalotic direction. We clear carbon dioxide from our body for our lungs on expiration. The more effort we put into breathing, onto breathing out, the more CO2 we will clear from our body. For example, a patient suffering from chest pain may begin to panic. They could in fact begin to have a panic attack which will cause them to hyperventilate. Hyperventilation will cause them to blow off more CO2. A low CO2 will drive their pH in an alkalotic direction. This would be referred to as a respiratory alkalosis. We might give this same patient morphine to help with their chest pain, but if we overdo it, if we give them too much, then we could potentially suppress the respiratory sensors in their brain with the opiate. As a result, they will start to hypoventilate. CO2 will build up in their blood and their pH will be pushed in an acidotic direction. The bottom element of our model represents the metabolic component of acidosis. We measure the metabolic effects on blood pH by measuring the bicarbonate levels in our ABG. Bicarbonate is primarily produced by the kidneys and acts as a buffer for pH in the blood. Uh, it effectively mops up excess protons, excess acid, and converts it into carbonic acid. Carbonic acid can then be broken down into water, which the body can use, and CO2, which can pass out through the lungs. Normally, enough bicarbonate is produced by the body to buffer any acids produced by metabolic processes occurring within the body. Metabolic changes in pH occur when there is an imbalance between the amount of acid being produced by the body and the available bicarb to mop up that acid. For example, a type 1 diabetic who doesn't take their insulin will start to produce ketones. Ketones are acidic. Acid will build up in the blood at a faster rate than the kidneys can produce bicarb to buffer its effect. The pH will be pushed downwards in an acidotic direction and the bicarb will be used up. Blood bicarb levels will begin to decrease. Reduced bicarb levels therefore indicate a metabolic acidosis. A metabolic alkalosis can occur when there is too much bicarbonate in the blood compared to the amount of protons, the amount of acid being produced by the body. The acid will be buffered at a faster rate than it is being produced and our pH will be pushed in an alkalotic direction. This would be referred to as a metabolic alkalosis. Of course, respiratory and metabolic components of blood pH don't work in isolation. They simultaneously affect blood pH. In some circumstances, both components may push blood pH in the same direction. For example, a patient suffering from severe acute sepsis will eventually start to suffer from multi-organ failure. As tissues become hypoxic, anaerobic respiration will occur and lactic acid will be produced. This will push the metabolic element in an acidotic direction. The lungs will eventually also become damaged and their ability to clear carbon dioxide will be reduced. CO2 will begin to accumulate in the blood, pushing the body into a respiratory acidosis. We would call this a mixed acidosis, as both respiratory and metabolic components are pushing in an acidotic direction. A compensation occurs when one element tries to compensate for a derangement in the other element. For example, the respiratory component may try to compensate for a derangement in the metabolic component. Let's go back to our type 1 diabetic suffering from a ketone acidosis. Acid is being produced by ketones, which is pushing the metabolic component in an acidotic direction. The body can respond to this metabolic acidosis 
by signaling the lungs to work harder. The work of breathing will increase and the carbon dioxide levels in the blood will be pushed downwards. The metabolic system may be pushing in an acidotic direction, but the respiratory system is attempting to compensate for this by pushing in an alkalotic direction. The net result is a blood pH that is neutral. We would describe this example as a fully compensated metabolic acidosis. Fully compensated because the alkalosis produced by the respiratory system has fully compensated for the acidosis resulting from the metabolic system. Let's look at another example. Guillain-Barre syndrome is an autoimmune condition where the body's own immune system attacks and damages the body's nerves. In severe cases, nerves controlling the respiratory system can be affected and the sufferer's ability to clear carbon dioxide can be reduced, leading to a respiratory acidosis. The kidneys, however, can compensate for this by secreting more bicarbonate. Increased levels of bicarbonate will effectively push the metabolic system in an alkalotic direction. In this example, the kidneys have produced enough bicarb to push the acidosis some of the way back towards a neutral pH. We would therefore refer to this situation as a partially compensated respiratory acidosis, as the metabolic system has not fully pushed the pH all the way back to neutral. Hopefully, you're now beginning to develop a good understanding of how respiratory and metabolic compensation occurs. Let's finish by looking at a couple of examples of ABGs. Here we have an example of an ABG that represents quite a typical scenario that we'd see in an ICU environment. So we have a patient that's been involved in a road traffic accident and they've needed, as a result of their injuries, to be intubated, have a breathing tube put down their throat and to be attached to a mechanical ventilator. They'll have been then sent to the ICU for treatment and during that time the mechanical ventilator is going to have taken over the work of breathing for them. So your respiratory muscles, your diaphragm, your intercostal muscles, like any other muscle in your body, will become weaker if they are not being regularly used. This patient has been attached to a ventilator for 25 days, so that's 25 days of their respiratory muscles getting weaker and weaker. But they've recovered from their injuries and they've got to a point where we've been able to extubate them, we've been able to detach them from the breathing machine and take away the breathing tube. A couple of days after we've taken away the breathing tube, and this patient appears to be struggling. They're short of breath, they're using their accessory muscles. We take an ABG and it looks a little bit like this. This might be a good point for you to pause the video, have a look at this ABG and see if you can work out what's happening before we go through it together. So the first thing we'll look at is the pH and we can see that it is acidic. So why do we think this is? Well, given the patient's recent past medical history, we would suspect the respiratory system. We know they've been ventilated for many, many days. We know that their respiratory muscles have probably got weaker and weaker in that period. And if we look at the CO2, we can see that indeed it is elevated. So weakened respiratory muscles haven't been able to sufficiently clear enough CO2 out of the body. And blood CO2 levels have become elevated, pushing their pH in an acidotic direction. This is in fact your classic type 2 respiratory failure. We have got low oxygen levels in the blood and we have got elevated carbon dioxide levels. So the next thing to consider is, is there any evidence of metabolic compensation? Is the metabolic system trying to compensate for this respiratory acidosis? Well, if we look at the bicarb levels, we can see that bicarb is 31. It is elevated. The kidneys are starting to up their production of bicarbonate and push more bicarbonate into the blood to try and combat this respiratory acidosis. However, the pH is still acidotic, so we know this isn't fully compensated. We're going to describe this as a partially compensated, because the pH hasn't returned back to a normal range, respiratory acidosis. Our second ABG has been taken from a patient suffering with sepsis. As we know, one of the complications of sepsis is a buildup of lactic acid in the blood. Therefore, we could reasonably expect this patient to be suffering from a metabolic lactic acidosis. And we can see from this ABG that the lactate is in fact elevated. Not only that, but we have a reduced bicarb level, which we would think consistent with a metabolic acidosis. However, if we look at the pH, we can see that it's neutral. It's within a normal range. 
The metabolic acidosis is, of course, being compensated for by the respiratory system. In response to the elevated lactate levels, the lungs have begun to hyperventilate, blowing off more CO2 and pushing the body into a respiratory alkalosis. We would describe this ABG as representing a fully compensated metabolic acidosis because although metabolic factors are pushing blood pH in an acidotic direction, the respiratory compensation has to push the pH all the way back to neutral. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Otherwise, thanks for watching.